So, we want to learn how to meditate. My name is Constantine, and I'll be helping you out with that today. So to meditate, there are three main things you need to know. How to find your posture, how to breathe, and what is meditation? How do you meditate? By the end of today's video, you'll be well-versed in all three of those things. You'll be able to find your posture in different variations. You'll learn several different breathing techniques, and you'll learn several different types of meditation. So you'll be more than ready to take on your mindfulness journey. A little background on me. I am a coach focused on religious harm reduction and spiritual recovery for LGBTQIA plus couples. Although that is my niche and specific area of focus, I work with a broad range of people in a lot of different areas, primarily through self-compassion, positive intelligence, neurolinguistic programming, and several other things. I have a background in wilderness therapy and psychology. I've been practicing mindfulness meditation and self-compassion for the better part of 10 years now. So I'm excited to bring this to you and help you on your journey. And without further ado, let's get started. Let's talk posture and taking our seat. You'll notice I got my cushion here, whatever you're using, whether you got a Zafu or some pillows or something rolled up, you wanna have that about six inches off the ground or so. And you'll notice that my knees are sloping slightly down. The reason for that is it rotates your hips forward so it starts to open up because if you think about your spine you've got that curvature that goes forward instead of you kind of sitting like this and it forces you to roll it back and then you're working harder to keep your spine straight so what it looks like from the front view my posture is pretty open you know you see the lotus position and all those really advanced yogis i don't have that level of flexibility or mobility in my body but what i can do is sit with a really open solid posture like this both of my shins are touching the ground and both of my knees are touching the ground and this is really comfortable and open for me it's really solid i got the three points of contact forming my triangle base as you find your seat you just adjust around a little bit and you're sitting up nice and straight we'll go over spinal adjustment right after this and you can drop your hands just right here in your lap you can put your hands out here personally i feel like that kind of throws me off center a little bit you can also position your hands like this at your dantian, right at your navel there, if you want to work with some of your energy cradle. But I like to just kind of keep it loose, keep it really comfortable. This works best for me. Let's say sitting like that is still uncomfortable for you. That's okay. Maybe it just depends on the day. Maybe that's how your body is put together. Maybe you've sustained some injuries. This seated, I call it seated samurai position, is another option for you. And so you can use your cushion right in the middle here. So for my Zefu, instead of putting it down, put it sideways so it's a slightly more vertical. And you straddle it just like you're riding a horse. Shins are making full contact, knees are down on the ground, they're below your hips. And this can be a super comfortable position. I feel great sitting like this as well. Knees, Dantian, hang loose, whichever you'd like. So for the purposes of this video, we're going to start with this seated position. If you want to do the seated samurai, that's totally okay as well, but we're gonna work on our posture here. Take a moment to just call back what an anatomically correct spine looks like, right? It's got those three curvatures. It comes from our skull, curves out to our rib cage, and then in in our lower back, and then curves out again at our tailbone. As we're thinking about that, you wanna kind of put those curves in your spine. That's how it's designed to sit. You also want to imagine a thread. It could be a golden thread. It could be a thread of pure light. It could be any color you'd like. Imagine a thread tied to the crown of your head. Not to your forehead, not to the base of your skull, specifically at the crown of your head. And it goes all the way up to the sky and it's pulling you up straight. Maybe we're slouched over like this. Tie that cord to your crown and allow it to pull you up. Once you're vertical, we're gonna really exaggerate those curvatures in our spine, right? Push our stomach forward. We're gonna curve our chest a little bit, pull our head back and push that tailbone out. We get really exaggerated, just kind of like a stretch all across your spine. Just notice those exaggerations for each curvature. Now, when you come out of that curvature, do it very gently and just notice the little shift when your body feels kind of locked in and centered, it'll feel like the vertebrae are stacking on top of each other. Okay. So we got really exaggerated curves, stretching our back, maybe pulling our shoulders back or curling them in forward. 
and then let that string pull your crown up. Let your spine relax into those positions and do this slowly. And just pay attention to your vertebrae as you do it. Notice when you pass that point of the curvatures and then come back to the middle. We've tied our thread of light to the heavens. We've relaxed our curves. We've got our spine anatomically correct. We're starting to feel a little bit of that stacking. Now we're going to lean forward, lean back, lean left, lean right. We're going to do it very gently, so I want you to follow along with me for this part as well. We are searching for center. Notice what it feels like to have your spine solid, straight up, and centered. Not over-exaggerated, not under-exaggerated. That thread pulling up from your crown. And take a deep breath into this. So we'll start by taking a small breath in. Exhale down. Squeeze your stomach in. And then breathe into your stomach. Up into your rib cage and your shoulders. And as you do this, imagine the air filling in between each vertebrae like clouds opening up. Hold. And exhale. We're going to imagine each vertebrae deflating and again stacking on top of each other in the center. We're searching for center. We've exaggerated our curvatures. We've inhaled. We've exhaled. Now, as little as you possibly can, the tiniest little movement, not way forward or way back, notice your center and just barely lean forward as tiny and slow as possible until you notice you've shifted out of center. Exhale, come back to center. Inhale, tiniest little movement back, up, off center. Notice, exhale, back to center. Good. All right, you're doing great. Last piece, left and right. So again, spine straight, notice center, inhale. Lean just slightly to your left, even less than this. Exhale back to center. Let the vertebrae stack. Inhale, slightly to your right, up oh, off center. Exhale back to center. Good. So whatever posture you've chosen, whether you have a more traditional seat like this, or you've done seated samurai, maybe you're sitting in a chair, whatever feels good for you. You've got your knees below your hips is the important part. You've got your thread tied to your crown. You've got the three curvatures in your spine. You've gone left, right, front, back to search for center. You found center. You've relaxed into it. Take a moment here. Breathe into that center and exhale. Now we're going to talk about breathing. I'm a firm believer in two things people need to do more without getting on too much of a soapbox. First one is drink more of this. Second one is do more of that. Most people are walking around chronically dehydrated and in a fight, flight, freeze, or fawn response because they are not getting enough oxygen to their brain and their system is trying to tell them to breathe. As I've been talking about this, maybe you're noticing how deep you breathe or how shallow you breathe. Maybe you only breathe down to here. Maybe you get down here. Maybe you get all the way down here. How often do you do that? Just take a second to notice and bring this into your awareness throughout the day. You'll be amazed how often you are holding your breath and your body is trying to get the oxygen it needs. We'll go over a few breathing techniques. First one, super simple. <laughs> Double inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. First inhale, inflate your lungs. The second inhale really kind of puts a little more pressure in those alveoli to pressurize them, really fill them with oxygen. And a long exhale flushes out the carbon dioxide. Next one is a threefold breath, and that has a double meaning. Three parts of your lungs three times. So what that looks like, I usually start with a small little inhale and exhale down. 
pulling your belly button back to your spine, really squeezing in your stomach, squeeze, 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 empty, empty. Notice what it feels like to be empty for a moment. And breathe into your stomach, chest, shoulders, hold. Flush it out of your mouth. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Hold empty, notice. Breathe into your belly. Rib cage expands. Shoulders open up. Hold. Flush. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Last one. Empty, empty, empty. All the stale air out. Hold. Empty. Just a little bit longer. Notice what your brain does. Notice what your body does. You're okay. Breathe into your stomach nice and slow. Big, big, big. Breathe into your rib cage nice and slow. Open, open, open. All collarbones open up. Last sip. Hold. Let your shoulders relax on that and feel your heartbeat. Listen for about four heartbeats and as slow, as calm and controlled as possible, exhale. So that you can barely even hear yourself exhaling like you're blowing on the face of a kitten. Nice and slow. Extend, extend, extend. Keep going, keep going. Great. Now we'll do a little bit of box breathing or rectangular breathing. And this is really simple. You just breathe in and visualize the shape of a square or a rectangle with your inhales and exhales. So let's say we do two seconds per side. Inhale, one, two, exhale, one, two, inhale. And then you start to extend it. You can double it. Inhale for three. Four, five, six, and see how much longer you can make it. You can also do rectangular breathing where your inhales are the short side and your exhales are the long side. Let's say you inhale for three, exhale for six, inhale for one, two, three, exhale for six, five, four, three, two, one, inhale, one, two, three, exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one. Nice. There are a lot of other breathing techniques. Those are just some introductory ones. Maybe you're familiar with them. Maybe you're not. Maybe you just wanted to revisit them. But the trick of any breathing technique is the exhale. And the reason for that is it flushes out the carbon dioxide. The inhale brings in oxygen, so your heart's pumping to circulate that quicker. The carbon dioxide flushes out of your exhale. The other part is exhale equals safety. If you think about from an evolutionary perspective, you're being hunted, you're hiding, there's a predator coming after you, and you're holding your breath. Danger, danger, danger. The danger is past. They didn't see you. You're safe. And <sighs> so when you're getting anxious, when you're getting wound up, when you're getting angry, when you're getting really sad, exhale. Big, deep inhale and flush it out of your mouth. Thanks for making it this far. So to wrap this video up, we are going to cover some final bases for your introduction to meditation. And we're going to talk about how long you want to meditate, which ones might be right for you, how it works, and which time of day. So let's get into that. First off, 15 minutes a day. That is the magic number. For any daily practice, any change that you're trying to make in your life, 15 minutes a day, dedicate yourself to doing it. Obviously, the longer you do it, the more practice you get. but Start easy, start in bite-sized chunks. You don't have to start at 15, maybe it's just five, maybe it's 10. Once you get past 15, maybe you wanna do 20. Find the number that works best for you. After that, which type of meditation should you do? Five, 10, 15, 20, got it, great. Totally doable, I'm in. What should I do? Well, mindfulness-based stress reduction, trauma-informed mindfulness. Mindfulness meditation is a bit of an oxymoron. Ironically, the fuller your mind is, the busier it is, the further you are from mindfulness. But a lot of people get uh, misled about what mindfulness and meditation looks like. They think they have to have a completely empty mind, but that is something that monks spend their entire lives trying to cultivate. Okay? That's an end goal. It's a process you're working towards. All you want to do is take a step back from your thoughts. Imagine you're sitting on a riverbank and your stream of consciousness is a river. And in that river is a bunch of leaves and 
twigs, sticks, things floating by, logs. And instead of you jumping on and going for a ride every single time, you get out of the river, you swim to shore, and you just watch for 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes. Oh, these are my thoughts. Don't try to put a dam in the river. Don't try to pull everything out of the river. Just let them move. And if they pull you along a little bit, that's okay. Just notice that you've been sucked back into the river and you want to swim back to shore. And you do that again and again. It's a little bit like working out. The more times you do it, the more reps you get, the stronger you get, the easier it is for you to do, the longer you can do it. Constantine, you know, I'm really distractible and I just can't seem to sit still and I have ADHD. Look, I totally get it. You think you can't meditate. You think because you're so distractible, you're not a good meditator. Well, turns out you're the first person that needs to be meditating. And it's the most beneficial for you. You can get the most out of it because you feel so scatterbrained. If you can focus your attention just for a few seconds objectively on your thoughts instead of being sucked in by them, that is huge progress for you. And it snowballs from there. And you will notice the biggest shifts in your day to day in your emotional resilience, in your awareness, in your ability to think clearly because you're coming from such a chaotic place and just beginning to find a little bit of relaxation and order in them. There are tens, hundreds, thousands of different types of meditation based on how creative you can be. Mindfulness is the one that has the most research behind it. That is the most traditional one. But you don't have to do that all the time. If it helps you to stay with your meditation practice and it makes it easier, Find some guided meditations, do some cool stuff. There's some really amazing visualizations out there and there's meditations with prayers and all sorts of different things. Find something that works really well for you. And if you can't find something, but you have some ideas, get creative. Congratulations. Now you know the basics of meditation. You know a couple different types, you know how to find your posture, you know some different materials. You're fully equipped to start your journey. If you would like to do some meditations with me, you can go to constantine.coach and you can book a call and we can figure out some coaching sessions and how to do some things online and you can practice some meditation live with me. I have a bunch of other videos of other guided meditations, inner child work, some other visualizations, zooming out into space and then coming back down to earth. So check those out and I hope you have fun on your mindfulness journey and your meditation journey. Thanks for tuning in.